Hello everyone, welcome to another vlog. I was going to film over the weekend, but I had the worst um, period <laughs> ever. So I just didn't have the energy to do it. Speaking of energy levels, I've actually really been struggling with that lately. I, I feel like I'm really having a lot of winter fatigue and I'm just not fully there myself with my normal energy levels. You know, like when I remember like what I'm like or what I was like during summer, I was up like at 5 a.m. every morning, straight to the gym, meditation, shower, uh, breakfast, work, and I was so productive and I was getting so much done because I was starting so early and because I had just so much more energy. Back then I was vlogging twice a week. And that's on top of making videos for my main channel as well. And I was just so productive and I was learning Italian and that, you know, right now, even that I sort of, you know, took a break from that, even though it gives me so much joy. Like I really enjoy learning Italian and it's been such a pleasure for me and it's completely just gone out the window right now. So to think back, this is what I was like during summer versus what I'm like now during winter, it's a completely different story. Now it's such a struggle to get myself out of bed before seven. So I am just not productive and I feel like I am busy all day long, yet it's like a lot of that time is kind of recovering from getting something done. So like I get something done and then I have to recover, <laughs> you know, take a break and then I can get back to working. So I feel like my resources have been really, really limited lately. It's been almost three months now of winter here in Brisbane, and it has been like the coldest winter in the recorded history of the weather and temperatures in this area. You know, and interestingly also, I've been watching some vlogs from people in Scandinavian countries. So I've been watching this vlog of a lady in Norway and another one in Sweden. I mean, their climate, their weather, their year looks very different than what we've got here in Australia. You know, so much colder. It can be, I think that the worst that it gets is like there's literally no sunshine at all for the like, entire month because the sun just doesn't rise over the horizon. It is so bizarre for me that people actually live in those temperatures However, something you've got to understand about me, and this is something that my Chinese doctor told me about two years ago, and it just kind of made a lot of sense and clarified a lot of things for me. And it was that people have different levels of internal fire, sort of internal warmth that, you know, keeps you warm in different, uh, especially in cold weather. So I have very little internal fire. That's why I thrive and I feel most comfortable when it's warm outside because I don't need my internal fire because the environment is warm. But people who would have a lot of internal fire, they actually really struggle in those warm uh, climates because it's just very uncomfortable for them. I literally need sunshine to thrive and I think that's one of the reasons for kind of my feelings of sadness lately is that I just haven't been getting my desired or required dose of sunshine, you know, every single day. So that's something that I need to keep in mind that <laughs> it's just the reality of my life. And, you know, I do have a yearning to go to those Scandinavian countries. I've never been. So I'd love to go to Norway and to Sweden and to visit Iceland and to visit all those, you know, different places because that's just me I have a yearning to go everywhere <laughs> I have a bit of a gypsy soul and that's okay so I definitely want to go there but I will probably visit in summer we'll see <laughs> we'll see what happens I just you know struggle to like imagine how people stay happy and well you know when they live in this kind of uh, temperatures but obviously they do and they even take ice baths, you know, some of them on some kind of regular basis. So uh, how do you guys get warm? <laughs> but I want to show you something actually, because I've had a bit more work done on my house. And last Saturday, actually, 
so almost less than a week ago, I had two lovely Scottish gentlemen who came over to do my kitchen cabinets. I, um, I've had, my kitchen is fine, like I'm really, really happy with it, but the, the doors and hinges were very, very old. So it just seemed like they would just start falling out <laughs> at some point soon. So you can see that the frame is kind of different colored now than the doors are. Uh, they used to be all the same color, but we just could not, couldn't match them to that lovely, lovely frame, um, which is why now the doors are a little bit different, but they all match. So at least that, that's, that's there, all the doors and drawers and all the cabinets have the same colored doors <laughs> and new handles, you know, to make it all nice and pretty. And the hinges are new as well. So um, that's the newest sort of development when it comes to my, my house. So at this stage, I really just have one more thing left on my to-do list when it comes to my house, and that's my uh, carpets. I still want to change the carpets. There is carpet in my, in my office and in the three bedrooms, so I just want to have them completely changed and replaced with new ones. But I think I'm gonna leave that for now because I'm going away to Europe next month. I'm flying in the end of September, and I just, don't have a lot of time to deal with that plus there's gonna be all the extra expenses to do with traveling and being in Europe <laughs> so I'm gonna deal with the carpets when I come back and there's something else that's been sort of sitting on my mind and I've been trying to work it out in my head and even spoke to one of my friends about it just to really figure it out but i haven't been able to yet and that's this i guess concept of wanting conflicting things i am finding myself so confused about life right now and i guess this does feel fairly new in my life because i was always fairly sure of my direction I just wanted to be free, I wanted to travel, I wanted to have adventures, I wanted to grow my business, I wanted to create abundance in my life and manifest awesome things, etc, etc. And I've been doing that throughout my 20s and 30s. But now, I, yeah, I feel a bit confused <laughs> because I feel like I actually want different things. And throughout my life, that kind of desire for other things has been also popping up, but I would kind of just reject it because it wasn't aligned with my main desires. So that all might sound a little bit mysterious. I don't mean to make it sound mysterious. Right now, I am feeling, I guess, a sense of grief over not having a family or a community. Um, this is not a new desire. I've wanted to have people, tribe, some kind of family, blood family, or some other form of a family around me. And I guess that just never really took priority in my life because the freedom and work and my passion for sexuality was sort of the dominating force. And so I, because I couldn't reconcile the two, or I couldn't see myself reco reconciling the two, I just kept opting for the freedom, for the adventure, for travel, and for just keeping my independence. Because I felt like having a family, having a partner, having children, and kind of, you know, that would mean settling somewhere and growing roots. And staying somewhere and get maybe potentially feeling a bit stuck um, in one place, which is like a terrifying thought to me. <laughs> For so many years, whenever somebody would kind of tell me about their life being so kind of routine and always in the same place and just doing the same things and going to work and paying their big bills and mortgage and just kind of living that very settled life, that actually sounded scary to me. But now, as I'm getting older, that desire that I did always have 
for that stability, for family, for, you know, for that more kind of stable and settled life, that is kind of like appearing more and more strongly in me. And because that desire for freedom and independence was so prevalent in my life for so many years, I literally would, I guess, seek out opportunities to have a community around me and then I just couldn't commit to them. So I actually did at some point when I was, where was I? I must have been in Melbourne back then. Yeah, in Melbourne. I found a co-housing community because I just loved that, I, that idea so much of living in a co-housing community with other people where you do have your privacy in your home, but it's all like all the houses are held on one piece of land. So you're one big community and you do a lot of different things together. So I love that. I thought, wow, that is such a cool thing to do. But I just couldn't commit because I felt like I felt this fear about, you know, what if I change my mind? What if I desire to be somewhere else next year? And here I'm kind of stuck with this co-housing community. Or a friend of mine would come to me with an opportunity to maybe look for a nice bigger house together back when I was still renting. So I thought that's an awesome idea. Yeah, let's, you know, let's get her resources and my resources. And instead of us living separately in kind of smaller places, let's invest in something really beautiful, awesome and big and maybe with a swimming pool and, you know, just like a really kind of more luxurious kind of a place. But again, I just felt so conflicted because I didn't, I guess I didn't want to screw her up in any way. I didn't want to be there for a while and then just to say to her, look, okay, that was fun, but I'm leaving now. So now you're left with this big house and you have to deal with it. You know, it's like, it just felt like, I could disappoint her in that way and I really didn't want to because I didn't have faith that I would want to stay there for, you know, as long as she would. And so while I've had that desire and a yearning and a craving for stability and for my tribe, I just kept always opting out of it because I was scared of losing my freedom and independence. And that was the kind of maybe guiding force in my life in a way but again now at this stage of my life i feel like yeah okay so i've got all this freedom i've got all this space around me i've got all this privacy that i've been cultivating and taking care of and protecting very very strongly because you know that's what feels good and safe to me but i am missing out on other things the question that i have is how, like, what do I do with that yearning and desire now? At this stage of my life, I'm very much doubting that I will have a family at this stage. Um, a partner, yeah, that would be nice, but probably not kids. <laughs> so how, how do I create, you know, this community, this family, this tribe around me, unless I kind of find it somewhere and maybe marry someone who's got a big family or join into some kind of housing community or some kind of tribe or some kind of some kind of group that's a bit of a scary i guess thought that i might just not have that because i might not ever find that co-housing community or that tribe or that or that family that i can join in i guess it just feels like there is sadness and confusion around that why desire something that I haven't been able or even wanting to create up to this point in, of my life? Why is the yearning for it coming up now? How do I reconcile that? And will I ever be able to commit to stay somewhere and to become that kind of settled, stable person in one place? with my tribe around me or will my fear of losing my freedom and my independence will that keep sabotaging that for the rest of my life like <laughs> what do you do with such conflicting desires and i'm not asking you for answers you know like this is something that i guess i need to come to <laughs> within myself and 
process and find my own answers. I would love to hear from you. Please let me know in the comments below, you know, if you resonate with that at all. Do you have maybe also conflicting desires or yearnings or goals in life that it's hard to reconcile? And how do you deal with that? What do you do about them? How do you build a life that is satisfying and happy? Thank you so much for being here and watching this and waiting a little bit longer than usually for, uh, for one of my blogs. <laughs> Hopefully things will speed up for me now as the sun comes out more and more and as it gets warmer and warmer. Thank you so much for watching, for your likes and comments. They mean a lot to me and I can't wait to have a little chat with you all in the comment section below. Bye.